If you've been craving a Halo style extraction shooter, this game might satiate that craving. Full disclosure though, this is not a Halo extraction shooter, but it is probably as good as that we will get for now. How's it going everybody? My name is Magneti. Welcome to the Mothership, your all-in-one extraction game news source. Let's dive right into this Halo mock-up game extraction shooter called Star Siege Dead Zone. First off, I want to mention I am a little bit nasally because I'm sick, so bear with me. I'm sorry about that. Let's start with just a brisk overview. Per the usual, we're going to go over the gameplay mechanics and then, of course, the hub. That's kind of how we go over all of our extraction shooter games. And then I want to talk about is it fun or worth playing? And then after that, we're going to go over the news, updates, and or future plans for Star Siege Dead Zone. And then my overall vibes at the very end, how I feel about the game. All right, starting off with the gameplay mechanics, honestly, it's a very Tarkov or the Cycle-esque kind of extraction shooter. I wouldn't go as far as to say that it is a copycat, but it's kind of erring on the side of that. So the setting of Star Siege Dead Zone is actually on, uh, it's kind of like a derelict freighter, some sort of spaceship of some kind. You have like a, a jump pack that lets you jump and like mag boots is kind of the vibe. Kind of have like this Halo-y armor is where I get the kind of Halo vibes from. And the zone is basically just the ship breaking or getting destroyed. So there is a zone kind of like a battle royale that closes in on the map further and further as time goes along. And as well as we're talking about the map right now, so the map is procedurally generated. Uh, it's basically completely random every time, sort of. I've found that there is quite a bit of similarities between different maps. It's almost like there's maybe 20 different parts of a map that the game randomly puts together, and that is kind of how it can be different. But I have definitely played at least two nearly identical maps before, so I don't know exactly how that works. As for the gunplay, it feels kind of unique and really good, actually. It's a little... It needs some tuning because this is a pre-alpha game, but it feels really good overall. There's overall three different weapon types. There's kinetic, energy, and melee, and there's roughly about 20-some different weapons. I think it's about 28. And then on top of that, there's the rarities, which with common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and exotic, which would be gray, green, blue, purple, yellow, and red, respectively. Along with the 20-some different guns plus their rarity, there's of course equipment, and then there's the equipment wheel, which is kind of interesting to me. So because your perks are, or excuse me, rather because your abilities are bound to the Q and E keys on PC, this game is coming to console soon, we'll get into that later, your equipment, like your shield packs, your health packs, your grenades, your flares, all that type of like equipment and stuff is bound to a equipment wheel. So you open the wheel with X and and then you select your item and then you left click to throw that item. So you've got different things like incendiary grenades, frag grenades, you've got the health pack, you've got the shield pack, you've got the smoke grenades, you've got a flare. I think there's some other different things in there that I might be missing, but you've got the equipment along with the guns. And along with equipment and guns, we have perks and abilities. Now there is 12 abilities and 25 different perks and the perks affect your abilities. Now there's a lot of different abilities, 12 of them. So there's like a, there's a scanner, there's a cloak, there's a sentry gun, there's a teleportation ability, a regen station, a hologram. There's a few other ones, but there's a lot of different abilities to choose from and you have those bound to Q and E. You can select two abilities to play with in each individual match. You can change in between between matches as many times as you'd like, try out different abilities. Perks now unlock at random at different levels, so every time you level up, you get a random perk, and it might affect an ability you enjoy using, it might affect an ability you haven't used yet. So that's kind of how the gun interaction mechanics work for Star Siege. Now, as for the looting style, it's kind of like how you would expect any extraction shooter. You open containers and you control click on the things you want to move into your inventory. Your backpack slot has 10 slots. You have a belt, which is where you put your equipment, which has six slots. And then you have a safe container, which unlocks up to five slots, depending on your level. You have two weapon slots. You have one kinetic weapon, one energy weapon, and you have one melee weapon. And you also have two ammo specific slots. So you, ammo doesn't have to waste a inventory slot. Lot. You have kinetic and energy ammo for your ammo slots. Looting is kind of meh overall for this game, to be honest. I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard to spice up the looting mechanics of games. I kind of like what Dead Drop has done, where there's like a bag and you can move it. Bro, I just picked up a whole ass backpack. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, you see... I think that's kind of an interesting take on the looting scenario, but there's not a whole lot you can do there. 
Now, another thing about Star Siege is that there are stats and the armor can affect your stats. Armor will randomly generate different status effects. So there's things like agility, power, handling, that type of stuff. And that will affect different things like your revive interaction speed, your kinetic damage, your spread reduction, your reload speed, your door interaction speed, those different things. So I think that is a really unique take on how armor works in a game. Having stats in a game, I think like this is really unique in my opinion. And I like that quite a lot. Now I want to talk a little bit about the PvPVE experience as well. So I personally feel like there is a lot of PvE and not a whole ton of PvP. I feel like on average you interact with maximum three different groups if you're doing PvP for trios. I haven't gotten a chance to play solos yet so I can't advocate for that portion, but I would say maximum three group interactions when you do PvP. And PvE is kind of all over the map. It's not very hard. It's enough to be entertaining but not too much to be distracting from looting and killing other players. I think it's a good healthy balance. I think it's kind of hard to find the exact balance in this genre, but I think it's good overall for right now, in my opinion. Now, I did mention a little bit about the game modes. I haven't really talked about it, but there is only two game modes as of right now, and that's trios and solos, which I personally think is great. I think it's refreshing to have a game that has a solo option, even though I haven't played it yet, which is kind of ironic, but I really, really do enjoy that that is an option, and I plan on hitting up solos a lot as soon as I'm done recording this audio. Now, moving into the extraction mechanic, the extraction mechanic is, I like it. It's smooth. It's good. I know this isn't a review video. It's just an overview, but basically it's pretty simple. All you have to do is walk up to an extraction pod and those don't pop up until closer to the end game. But once it does pop up, you just walk up to it, activate it and jump on it. Pretty easy, pretty quick, really simple and smooth. Now, something I do want to put a lot of emphasis on is the crafting and salvaging mechanic in this game because I really enjoy it. It's super simplistic and it's kind of a unique take for me. I, I, I think it's in Tarkov, Escape from Tarkov, but I don't know for sure. Basically, you can take any gear that you have and you can salvage it. And then with that salvage, you can go to the crafter and you can craft a one up of that gear. So say, for example, you have two pieces of green armor or uncommon armor. You could take that to the salvager, scrap it, or salvage it and then you can take that scrap to the crafter and you can craft one piece of rare armor which i think is really cool and you can craft any piece you want so if you go to the crafter and you have the salvage that you need you can craft any specific weapon you want you can craft any piece of specific armor you want a helmet piece a chest piece hands or boots any specific piece you want now, the stats that come with those weapons and armor are going to be random, which is probably a good thing. Now, there is a known crafting issue as of right now, as of the recording of this footage. The known crafting issue is that once in a while you will, or I would say probably about 50% of the time, you will not receive or spend your salvage. So for example, say you spend two pieces of salvage to get a rare kinetic rifle. You may not lose that salvage, but you also won't receive that item until you either close the game or or start and end a match. However, it does keep track of what's going on, so you'll still get what you are owed, but it doesn't work 100% of the time immediately in the menu screen, which, you know, being a game in beta, that makes sense, I guess, but hopefully they're working on it. All right, so I've spent a lot of time on the gameplay mechanics, so let's hurry up and get into the hub, which unfortunately is exactly like Tarkov, excluding the actual interactable part of the hub. It's literally just a bunch of menus, which I hope to God the developers change because these games need interactable hubs. I've talked about this in my other videos as well. It's just, you know, you got the home tab, the loadout tab, the merchants, the contracts, the progression, cosmetics, and the shop. And the cosmetics and the shop are both real currency purchasable items since the game is free, although I think that's kind of outlandish since the game is still in alpha. Anyways, as for the merchants, you've got Juice, Ghost, Scooter, Rust, and Azura, which respectively deals with weapons, armor, munitions, salvaging, and crafting. And then you've got the Contracts tab, which for me personally right now is kind of an unknown. I'm having issues with the Contracts tab. It's showing that I have zero hours and zero minutes or 500,000 hours and zero minutes until new contracts are coming to me. I don't know if it's level lock or if they're just working on it or what's really going on with that. However, I have seen gameplay footage back in about July, June time that did show that people had working contracts. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. 
Next is gonna be the progression tab. The progression tab is kind of weird, but okay kind of vibes. Like it looks like a ranking system. It's not your actual level. They got rid of the level tab in one of their update patches. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but okay, sure. Next is gonna be the cosmetics and shop. I kind of told you about that already. There's not really much to go over here. And lastly, the home page. I did bring it up earlier, but this is really just where you have your news tab, your start game tab. You can invite your friends, view your party, you know, that type of stuff. And uh, I did go over the loadout tab a little bit, but not really. I just mentioned it backtrack a little bit here. So the loadout tab is where you can change, you know, you can access your backpack and your stash and you can move things around from your backpack to your stash, equip different guns, abilities, that type of stuff, perks, et cetera, et cetera. All right, moving into is it fun or worth playing? Now, this is going to be entirely based off of my opinion, and you're going to kind of get a general idea of how I feel about the game. So in my opinion, it's free. It's new. It's slightly different than some other extraction shooters out there. So sure, play it. Why not? It's free. You know, at least try it out. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You didn't lose anything and you can always remove it from your Steam library. No big deal. And overall, uh, how I'm feeling, I'll get into that later. All right, next up is gonna be news, updates, and future plans. So there is unfortunately, sad face, no official roadmap. I think roadmaps are something that developers need to invest a lot more time in, in my opinion. But anyways, their website does list three different games or DLCs or something. I'm not really sure, but if you just look up Star Siege Dead Zone and go to their actual like official website, you will see that there is Star Siege Dead Zone, Star Siege Raiders, and Star Siege Tribes. Now, I have seen Star Siege Raiders gameplay from 20, June of 2022, but I don't know if that's really the same thing or if, it, if they just merged that into Star Siege Dead Zone. I'm not really sure what all of this is, and I couldn't uncover anything. <laughs> My fabled Reddit resources were lacking, so if I get anything on this, I will make sure to make an update video as soon as possible for sure. Now, I did mention earlier in the video that they are working on getting to console. I mentioned it briskly if you caught it, but there is an official console port work being done. So they have explicitly stated that they want this game on console. So that is a big plus for console gamers. Rolling into a little bit more news or uh, updates and plans and such, Prophecy Games, the developer of Star Siege, seems to be very communicative with, you know, one to three patches a month and about one to two updates per month. It kind of varies, but it looks like they're pretty consistent and communicative about that stuff. Prophecy Games is also really receptive to feedback. They actually had a whole news tab advertisement on the front page. I clicked on it and read that they completely reverted their gameplay style for the fans back to they had an original idea. It seemed like they changed it. The fans said, fuck this. This isn't what I wanted to support. And they were like, wow, OK, this didn't go how we thought it would. So they completely changed it back to what the original idea and concept was, which I think is great. Shows that they're really receptive to their fans and their feedback. So that's unfortunately really all I have for news and updates and future plans. I couldn't really uncover much about this game, surprisingly. So that's really all I have. Hopefully, maybe I can get inside their social media partner program. I don't know that that'll happen, but if I can, I will try and inform you guys uh, on as much as I possibly can. All right, so lastly, my overall vibe of the game. So I wanna give you my opinion on the overall game satisfaction. I think it's okay. I think right now, because they're in beta mode, drops might be kind of overly pushed. Things might be easier to get and stuff like that. I feel like the game is a little easy, so it's not quite as satisfying as I would hope it to be. And the gap between a naked run and a fully decked out run is like beyond fathomable. I got completely wiped and eliminated, literally erased off the map in 0.1 seconds by somebody that was fully decked out in gear. So they're needs to be some sort of remedy to that, in my opinion. And if there is, then there will certainly be a higher satisfaction for sure. So my opinion on the potential of the game, eh, I think the potential of the game is not that great. If I'm being completely honest, I think there needs to be a lot of creative work put into this in order for the potential of this game to be really anything above the cycle frontier. I think the same thing will just happen to this game as cycle frontier did if they don't get creative quick, in my opinion. My opinion of the quality of the development team, we kind of went over that a little bit already. I think that the development team, Prophecy Games, is really, really communicative, which is great. They're receptive to feedback, which is fantastic. Everything I've seen, they're really responsive on Twitter. Overall, really good vibes from this company.
Lastly, I want to mention what the likelihood of it taking off or of the game being great. We kind of went over that with the potential of the game. Again, really, I just want to say a lot of creative mindset needs to be put into this game. And I think it has the potential to really take off if they get creative. OK, just I think Prophecy Games needs to get out of this shell and find something to break out of the mold. I'm not creative. I don't make games. I'm a content creator, so I don't know what that would be. But if they can do that, I think it's likely that it will take off. I think any extraction game that can break out of the mold will take off, you know, if they can really do that. But other than that, stick around for more extraction game news, guys and gals. We'll talk again real soon. Peace.